Tonight culminates an ancient period of worship known as the Easter or the Paschal Triduum. As with most things ancient, the significance in Christian worship has been sort of lost over the years. To understand its significance, we need to take a moment to understand what it is. Let's begin with its name. We all know what Easter is, but how many of us know the word Paschal? Paschal comes from the Hebrew word Peshach and from the Latin word Pascha, which have both been used to describe the week-long feast of the Jewish Passover. Also, it has been used to describe the Passover Seder, the meal they eat. The Passover or Paschal lamb, that is the main entree at that dinner and a special peace offering that is made as part of the feast. Those of us who have been participating in the Bishop's Bible Challenge have been reading about the development and the importance of the Passover celebration. A seven day festival that commemorates the night God sent his angel to Egypt to impose a final judgment on Pharaoh that would bring about Israel's long-awaited release from captivity. In anticipation of this final judgment, the people of Israel were to prepare and protect themselves following a very specific set of instructions from God. By the end of the Passover, the people of Israel are no longer slaves. A new Israel is born, and they begin that long journey to the Promised Land. As we look back over the story of the Passover, we see that on the tenth day of Nisan, the first month in the Jewish calendar, they were to select a lamb that would end up being the main course of their meal. Then on the 14th day of Nisan, the day of preparation, they would sacrifice that lamb, placing some of its blood on the doorpost and lentils of their homes as a sign for the angel of death to pass over their house because those who lived there were faithful Jews. By the next morning, Pharaoh summons Moses and says, he has had enough. And he tells Moses to take his people out of Egypt. But before leaving, (coughs) on the 15th day of the month, Israel offers a second meal. Their first as a free people in thanksgiving for what God had done. Then according to scripture, they pack up and they get out of town. According to Webster's Dictionary, triduum is a Latin word meaning three days. And if we look at God's saving act in the life of Israel, we can see that it involves, at least the last part of it, three days. Now it's worth noting that in Jewish tradition, the day begins at sunset. So after sunset on the first day, the people begin to prepare their meal sacrificing their lamb. And then they wait expectantly for God to do what God is going to do. As morning approaches, the news begins to spread. They are now free. 
at the beginning of their first day of freedom, at the following sunset, they share a meal of thanksgiving, of peace. And by morning, they are preparing to leave the life they live in captivity behind. And at some point on that third day, Scripture implies that they emerge from the exile as new people and begin their long trek to the Promised Land. From what I have read, it's a pretty big deal for Israel when that 15th day of Nisan fell on the Sabbath, on Saturday, the last day of the week, the day God set aside for rest. Now we know from the scriptures that Jesus is raised from the dead on the first day of the week, or Sunday. So we can see how the pastoral tradeum begins to take shape in Christian traditions. The tradeum began as three days of prayer, remembering all that had happened so that by Easter morning, the morning was over and the celebration could begin. Over time, it took on a slightly deeper meaning as it reflected on the major events of those three days in the life of our Lord. On that first day, Jesus gathers with his disciples in the upper room to share in the Paschal Feast. And later that same day, he is sacrificed on the cross. On the second day, the people wait Knowing the good news of resurrection, they anxiously await to proclaim it. And while waiting, they reflect on all that God has done for them in and through Jesus Christ. Then on the third day, Jesus emerges from the dead to live again. And if we were to think about it in Jewish terms, on Monday, Thursday, we gather together just as Good Friday begins. By sunset on Good Friday, Jesus has died and been placed in the tomb. From sunset on Good Friday until now, we sit knowing the good news, knowing that we are free from the bondage of sin, yet we are unable to Instead, choosing to reflect on all that his sacrifice has meant for us. That makes tonight the start of the third day. And we are told that that empty tomb is discovered at dawn of the third day. And that Jesus shows himself to Mary, the first apostle to proclaim the good news of the risen Lord. So if the tomb is found at dawn on the third day, why are we here tonight? Historically, the Paschal Triduum lasted three full Day. As I mentioned, it began with three, as three days of prayer. But eventually the people found three days of prayer too difficult. And interest in the events began to fade. So the church began to include what are called passion plays or reenactments, some of which were quite elaborate to teach and entertain the people those three days. As one might expect, not a lot happens during the time set aside as Jesus lay in the tomb. So the people begin to come and go until the vigil begins. The same vigil we celebrate 
tonight. The only difference is that their vigil lasted all night long. And to keep people interested, it answered from a Christian perspective the first question a child asks at the Passover Seder. Why is this night so special? During the Paschal Vigil, what we are doing tonight, the story was, as it remains, retold in the light of the good news that Christ has come among us. And that through Christ, we know the kingdom of God has come near. While we no longer spend three full days in prayer, remembering and hearing the story of God's saving act, we do spend time each day or each day trying to remember the events that transpired. On Monday, Thursday, we listened as Jesus encouraged us to continue that reconciling work he had begun and reminded us that he would always be with us. On Good Friday, we listened as Jesus was nailed to the cross and laid in the tomb. And Holy Saturday, we spent in prayerful reflection, waiting anxiously to proclaim the good news. And now together, here we are, once again, to hear the story of why this night is so special. We gather for this vigil just after sunset, the start of the third day, the beginning of Easter, because honestly, if we were to meet so as to declare the risen Christ at the break of dawn, or if we were to make this an all-night affair, I doubt I would have very many of you here with me, <laughs> let alone would we be awake to make that glorious proclamation. It is through the Paschal Triduum, as we celebrate it in the Episcopal Church, that we get to hear the story that is essential to our understanding of God's saving act. An act that frees us from the captivity and power of sin and restores us to new life in and through Jesus Christ. Recognizing this, how can we not say, Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord, the Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.